Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can get this small Python script and uh, use it to activate certain actuators. So we can get uh, any type of sensor and put it into this Python script and then the Python script will then determine which uh, actuators here are enabled. So right here what I've basically got going is if I press P I can spin around so left and right arrow and if I don't press anything it stays still and if I press I it goes invisible and as you can see in the top left hand corner the property invisible uh, is equal to true so all of that is handled uh, through this one Python controller which is quite handy because otherwise uh, probably need lots and lots of other controllers which sort of gets quite messy so first thing we're going to do is click file new and open up a new blend file then in the top here we're going to select blender game and uh, frame rate of 60 and GeoSL under shading then we're going to do one more thing and that is under display click debug properties and it's just going to make the property show up in the top left hand corner then down here we're going to select game logic and then we're going to have to change this back to textured then I'm going to press G and Z or GZ move it up on the Z axis then I'm going to press Shift A add a plane, press S to scale it and uh, something like that is fine then I'm going to select my cube and under the physics I'm going to select dynamic so I can drop down to the cube I'm going to add my sensors and actuators that I want so um, I'm going to add my two keyboard sensors so left arrow and right arrow and that's just fine then I'm going to add a, another keyboard sensor so this is going to be for the invisibility so it's going to be tap and any key you want I'm just going to use I again and then I'm going to do one more and this is going to be another keyboard I guess you could use message as well if you wanted to uh, but this is going to be invert and all keys so when a key isn't being pressed then on the other side we're going to add our actuators so we're going to add two motions and uh, then we're going to add two visibilities as well one of them not visible and then on this side we're going to add a property called invisible like that or invisibility whatever you want that's going to be a boolean and then we're going to select this eye here so basically what that does is it's uh, we can toggle whether we want it to be true or false and depending on what that is it will uh, set these visibility actuators to true or false so uh, now I'm gonna go here and call this one left and I'm gonna go here call this one right and uh, I guess you can call this one invis or just toggle and uh, no, it's just no keys okay so we're gonna add uh, two more on the side and these are just gonna toggle the uh, actual property itself so assigning that to true or false first one's gonna be called true and the second one's gonna be called false and the true is obviously going to sign invisible to true and the false is going to do the opposite okay so just false and then we're going to add one python controller and join everything up to it like so okay so the next thing we're going to do is in our python controller we're going to change it to module Basically the difference between this is, is like a script I guess has to be written in a certain way and it can sort of run by itself but a module is uh, internal, it runs a little bit faster but um, I think it's more library based. Uh, but anyway we're going to be using module, then we're going to create a new text block, we can just call this well, even just test and the important part is you have to put .py afterwards with scripts it doesn't really matter you can stick anything you want in the name and it works fine but with modules you have to then I'm going to keep scrolling along here and select um, all three of these just because I like having lots of colors and making the code look fancy 
Okay, so we're going to get started with our coding. So I'm um, going to make this window nice and big and make sure your cursor is in the window. Then we're going to start by typing def and uh, space and then main bracket uh, c o n t bracket and then colon or semicolon. Um, so basically just this first line of code is your entry point for the Python to start off with. So down here in your module you have your name here, test. So you put in test and then you put it a dot and then you put in this name here. So that name can literally be anything you want it to be. You probably want to make it relevant to your script. So maybe this one we can call it test. Uh, and then this is the DEF is sort of like uh, the calling function so where it starts so we'll put in our name here without the PY then we'll put a dot and it will start uh, or it will run the script from point test so right there feel free to change that name if that doesn't work for you then we're going to press enter and it should sort of increment for you then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify our sensors here. So I'm going to type uh, in the first keyboard sensor here, so it goes by the name up here. And I'm going to type in left, and then space, and then equals, and another space, C-O-N-T, so controller for short, uh, dot sensors and then we're going to have a square bracket so this is beside the P key on your keyboard uh, then a quotation mark and we we'll want the name that is for left so that's just left again so it is case sensitive so you have to make sure that's right then another quotation mark and another square bracket then I'm going to press enter and do the same for right so right equals uh, C O N T for controller dot sensors, then a square bracket, quotation mark, and the same name. And then we're going to do our next one, which is toggle is equal to uh, controller dot sensors, and then square bracket, quotation mark, uh, toggle. Now again, if you hadn't named these, it's definitely not a problem. You just put, uh, you have to make sure you spell it right, but you, you just put keyboard 1, keyboard 2, keyboard 3, and it would still assign it to this value here. Again, you can uh, name these whatever you want. It's up to you. So the next one's going to be no keys, and that is going to be equal to controller.sensors, square bracket, and if you look down here in the name, I've got no keys again, so that one should fit in quite nicely. And there we go, that's that part done. Okay, so now we start getting into the sort of if statements. So once we've done that, um, we're finished with the sensors, so we can press enter twice and the increment should stay. Then we're going to uh, get our no keys sensor working first. So we're going to type in if uh, and then no keys, so the same name here, uh, dot positive, um, and then we're going to put a colon, and then we're going to press enter, and it will increment it one more time, and this time we're going to type in uh, c-o-n-t again for controller, dot deactivate, and this time we're going to put in a normal bracket. So what this has done here is from the controller it's gone and deactivated whatever actuator we're going to put in here. So if no keys are being pressed, we want it to first of all deactivate motion motion, what it's just called here. So we're going to put in a normal bracket, then quotation mark motion with the capitals, another quotation mark and a closing bracket. I'm going to do the same for the other motion, so motion number one here. So C O N T dot uh, deactivate and then bracket quotation mark motion and motion one this time. 
another quotation mark and another bracket and before we go any further we have to add in our property anywhere in here in our sensors we can press enter and then this is going to be our property so and just invis for short and then is equal to c o n t and then this time we're going to put a dot but instead of sensors it's a property so this is for our invisible property so we have to put owner instead and then a square bracket quotation mark and then the same name is down here with the square bracket again oh. okay so that part's done then we can make ourselves a new line so press enter a couple times and I think it's uh, four times press backspace four times to get rid of that increment we're going to do our second if statement and that is if toggle is positive and invis is equal to true oh true so you have to make sure you put two equal signs then we're going to do another colon and press enter so if toggle is positive if we have pressed i and invisible is equal to true then we want it to set it back to visible so we're going to activate visibility one and it's also going to assign it to false we're going to activate this one so we're going to type cont dot activate and then a normal bracket quotation mark and visibility like so if we spelled it right and another quotation mark and a closing bracket and for the next one cont dot activate and uh, another bracket and this time we're going to activate the false property which is just called false here so uh, quotation mark false quotation mark closing bracket press backspace four times and now we need the if statement for the opposite of this so if toggle is positive and invis is equal to false I'm going to do a colon and uh, cont controller dot activate this time we're going to make it invisible so this is visibility one and we're going to be activating the actuated true as well so it's going to activate bracket and quotation mark then visibility one make sure you've got all the caps right as well and uh, yep closing bracket on that and then we're also going to activate the true property so it's going to activate um, the actuator true like so Okay, so that is toggle, invisible, and no keys done. Now we just need left and right. So we're going to press enter a couple of times, spread out the code, press backspace four times. And then we're going to type in if, and this time left dot positive. Now these ones are a bit more simple, so we'll just do colon, press enter, and we just want to activate the normal motion. So um, we're going to type cont dot activate and uh, we're going to do a bracket quotation mark and this is just going to be normal motion like so I'm going to do a closing bracket then I'm going to press enter one more time press backspace four times then if right dot positive then I'm going to press enter and it's going to activate um, bracket and this time it's going to be motion one okay and if you've got everything set up right that should be working so we'll drag this over a bit and there's you don't have to put any sort of ending in if you'd notice it sort of gets squashed and like this doesn't really affect the script it should still be working fine so now if we press P invisible is set to false if we press I it's set to true 
goes invisible. So we got that part working. And if we try to use our arrow keys, nothing's working. The reason for that is we haven't actually set any values under here. So I'm going to just turn rotate on, just opposites like that. And so now if I press P, then uh, the I key should be working and I should be able to spin as well. If you notice though, you hold down, say, left arrow and then you tap right arrow, it will stay still completely. Uh, and yeah, that's sort of annoying. You have to re-push the button uh, to keep it going. So to get rid of that sort of annoyance, under uh, left positive, we're going to disable the motion for right. So we're going to type in cont dot deactivate, and it's going to be for motion one. It's going to deactivate. And then it's going to be the opposite for the right movement. So cont dot deactivate, and then uh, just normal motion for this one. So what it was doing before is you'd sort of have it rotating in one direction, and then as soon as you tap the other key, they'd just be uh, countering each other, and it'd stay completely still. So now if we try it, we hold down the right key, tap the left key, and it stops momentarily, but it will keep on spinning if you let go. There we go, we have a very awesome little script and a nice spinning cube, which can go invisible. So obviously you can use this for many other things. So you can use this for a huge number of things. I was sort of a bit silly here, I only put keyboard inputs in, but um, I've tried this, it works with uh, messages, it works with near sensors, it works with collisions, sort of any sensors. Um, and you set them up right here and then you can activate the actuators through the Python script with it. But anyway, that's the uh, end of the tutorial guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully there will be some more Python tutorials coming out. Also if you notice, it might be sounding a bit different because I got a new microphone. Yeah, let me know in the comments if you think it sounds better or worse. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one.